One of the things that any system administrator is going to worry about is patch management. And the IS auditor is interested in the patch management process itself because we want to be able to see the successes of patches. We want to see if there were any service disruptions because we patched or didn't patch. And we want to be able to track that sort of stuff. So when we talk about patch management, we have some best practices here. We need to be aware of the available patches and determine are they appropriate. Now there are a number of different products and tools. Now, like Microsoft has a free one with the, their Windows Server products where you can set up a service, a server, that downloads the patches from Microsoft. You put them onto a test machine, see if you like them, then you approve them or not. And then they get deployed out to the general population. But you'll want to be aware of what patches are there, which ones are truly needed, because there will be patches for different languages, for applications you don't have, for different platforms that you don't have, like there will be 32-bit and 64-bit. And, and so you have to determine what do you really need. Also, most IS managers are aware that you patch one thing, you break another. And um, so you have to test within your own environment, will this patch actually work? Because even if the patches are well tested at the vendor, they're not tested against necessarily third-party products or, or other vendors' products. So we need to test and make sure that these patches don't break anything, including our own internal, internally created patches. Make sure they don't break anything as well. We also need the installation process in place. So typically, you'll download patches from the vendor, you'll evaluate them, and you'll have some automated way of distributing them and maybe sending those same patches down to yet another location. So you need an infrastructure or a system in place to distribute the patches and also report on um, what patches were distributed, which machines actually got them. There are plenty of tools. There's System Center. There's, there's a Windows Server Update Services. Uh, um, there, there are plenty of tools that can track what was downloaded, what was applied, and what was applied to, to which machine. So we're going to, as an IS auditor, want to know that all of that is in place. And we want to be able to watch the change and release management process as patches are distributed. Different kinds of change. You'll have regular patches and regular updates. And in fact, what are individual patches will be rolled up on a regular basis into a service pack, which includes all the patches up to that point. So we'll have normal ones. And we'll have um, standard changes. We can also have emergency changes. So just realize that not all updates, not all patches are equal. Some are a hot fix. Some are an emergency. Uh, some of them are just a normal thing. Some are critical. Some are security oriented. Some are recommended. So there are all kinds of updates and patches. And they shouldn't all be treated equally. So when we talk about change management and release management, two different concepts here. In change management, we have to worry about how critical is the change, and we need to track the change configuration and make sure that the change was authorized. And we have a special process for this, and based on how urgent it is or the type. Release management is, okay, have we actually tested this plan? Have we rolled it out? And do we have a rollback as well? So two kinds of thoughts here in patch management. For change management, things that we can measure for the metrics of change management, we can see how many changes were requested versus how many were made. And we'll want to maybe know the difference there. We can see how many were successful and how many failed. And also, what was the rate of disruption or interruption? How many interruptions did the change or the patches cause? And we want that number, of course, to stay as low as possible. For configuration management, remember configuration is we are setting something up to work well, be in compliance, uh, support our standards, etc. And configurations, of course, will be changed regularly. So you'll have requests for configuration changes, what we call configuration items. And so we want to make sure that as we're gathering metrics about it, obviously we want the information to be um, of a high quality and we want to make sure that the information is complete. We know what configuration changes were requested and what, which ones were actually executed. And another important thing is 
do we have enough data? Is it high enough quality where we can predict whether or not the changes are actually going to have the effect we want? So do we know that these patches will help um, address this security issue or improve that performance? Or do we not know? So we want to have enough data that, so that we can hopefully track uh, and predict ahead of time that um, this change will be useful or not, or these changes will be useful or not. For release management, some of the metrics that we'll want to be looking at is the number of resources, computers, tablets, whatever they are, servers, devices, that we have to deploy changes to and that we have to support. And the number of incidents that we have, and also the user's perception, did, did this improve anything? And also, what is the cost of doing this? So for our release management, we're worried about those kinds of metrics. So when we're talking about evaluating change, configuration, and release management, as an IS auditor, we're going to want to look at these things. We want to make sure that the patch management process documentation is stored safely, that we can look at it, it's accessible, that it's frequently reviewed. We want to make sure that there are steps that are published and followed in the patch management process, such as download first, test on that, um, approve, not approve, clear out the um, patches you ended up not using, um, maintain the database that holds the patches. We want to make sure that testing is done first because I know Windows Update automatically goes and, and downloads things. You, you really want to test things first because you never know for sure how an update will work with your particular applications. Make sure there's a rollback plan so that if there is an update, we can roll back in case something happened. Usually, um, with, with operating systems, with desktops, you can set a um, restore point with, with Windows operating systems so that in case this blows up on us, we can roll back and it will um, restore the registry and drivers um, and configurations back to an original point. Make sure that the sources used to determine the need for patching are valid, like the vendor is communicating and telling, hey, you really need it, it's a critical update, it's a security update. Um, make sure that uh, we have websites and distribution lists, uh, that these are valid sources. Uh, verify the sources are reviewed regularly. And investigate to make sure that um, systems that are patched manually are not maybe patched inappropriately or too frequently or, or not frequently enough. So these are all the things that an IS auditor is going to want to look at when taking a look at patch and change management.